Okay. Um, welcome, everyone, um, and good evening to you all. Um, thank you to Marilyn and Zora, who are going to be our host this evening. Um, for those of you who have joined this event, uh, and equally for those of you who may watch this later, I'd say uh, welcome to you all to this year's launch of our Black History Month Program of Activities for 2024. Yay! If you don't know me, my name is Clive Saunders, and I'm, uh, I shall say, it's my distinct pleasure to be the chair of the Watford African Caribbean Association. Tonight, our aim is to launch our program uh, to tell you a bit more about what to expect during the month of activities, to take your questions and queries, and also to provide a bit of entertainment uh, or probably edutainment uh, as well. Uh, so our program has been put together by a group of uh, volunteers who work on the auspices of our board of directors. Um, on our program, there are also some activities that are organized by others, such as the, the Palace Theatre and the, um, Alex um, Williams, who is here with us this evening. Um, we thank all of those people for what they've done. I particularly want, do want to thank um, Gemma Johnson Gaston, who's not actually here with us as yet this evening, who is uh, our administrative officer, uh, uh, who is uh, somebody who's made a world of difference to our organization. And if you like the publicity that uh, uh, you've seen us putting out, that's all down to her uh, skills. Um, kind. There will be some people contributing to tonight, and I want to extend my thanks to them now, although, of course, we'll be thanking them uh, uh, later. But most of all, thank you all for being with us uh, either uh, tonight or whenever you watch this uh, video when it's put out there. A little bit briefly about the Watford African Caribbean Association. Uh, we uh, were started in 1976, so we are now 48 years old. In 2026, we're going to be celebrating all being well, 50 years of existence. We're an organization that would say, we say we cover what for Tree Rivers and much of the surrounding area, whether it's north, south, east, or west. We're an organization, we're inclusive, and we welcome anyone who's committed to work uh, with us to uplift the community. In short, we welcome friends of our organization. There's no doubt, though, that our focus as an organization, um, and it's what we've been set up to do, to, to focus on the health and overall well-being of people of African heritage. Of course, we are a charity, so we are a non-partisan organization, uh, and as such, we don't engage in any party politi po uh, political activities. Um, we have people amongst us from all of the main political parties. As an organization, we have a range of activities that currently take place and a, a wider range that we've uh, engaged in over a period of time. We have our 50 plus, and if, if any of you within that age group, it's uh, there for you and even for some younger. We have a youth project uh, called Tribe, which operates uh, on Mondays. And of course, we've got our long standing sickle cell and thalassemia support group uh, um, that continues to, to do what it can. We also offer uh, this, uh, support around advice, support, signposting, and so on. Uh, we also have a number of WhatsApp groups that people can join in. We are a membership organization, and membership is free. All you need to do is to complete the membership form, which is available online, and we'll put the link in the chat. Um, and we do recognize from feedback that sometimes some people have some difficulties getting um, completing the form. And my sense is that often to do, it might relate to the browser you're using. So if, if you try one, it doesn't work, try another one. Uh, we have organized uh, uh, Black Instrument activities for many years. Uh, however, since COVID, we've done much of this virtually, uh, as, as of course we're doing tonight. It has been said, of course, to, to us that uh, we should do a bit more face-to-face, and we'd love to do more. But as a, a, a small charity, uh, those activities are uh, a bit more expensive to organize. And uh, funds are not as easily come by nowadays as used to be the case. Um, it is also the case that, uh, um, from my experience elsewhere, 
that face-to-face -face sessions are more difficult to record and then share. Um, and therefore, this platform is actually better, in my view, for sharing. You might think differently about that. Um, just to go or touch on Black History Month, though, uh, for us, Black History Month cannot uh, be... The, Black history can't be defined uh, in one month. Uh, uh, for us... It's every day, it's every week, every month, every year. Um, however, the October celebration is symbolic and recognizes our absence from what is um, much of mainstream history, uh, or, or let's say our presence is seldom been recognized as it should be. And that hasn't changed. Uh, and until that situation is rectified, and uh, when we talk, think, think about uh, change in the narrative around this, then we will continue to do what we can in October and throughout the year to try and uh, rectify that situation. The very notion of Black History Month, uh, as we know it, actually had its roots in um, the USA, where uh, it started off something called Negro History Week, um, which is back in the days when we didn't talk about um, black per se. It was uh, back in those days when we'll talk about uh, um, uh, Negro history, uh, recognizing that lack of um, recognition uh, way back in 1926, so nearly 100 years ago, uh, when Carter G. Woodson uh, introduced that concept. Um, that moved on from that to become what they did call Black History Month. Uh, but in the U.S., that celebrated in February. Uh, when it arrived here, though, in London in 1987, it uh, was, uh, we chose to celebrate it in October, and I've continued uh, to do so. Um, I could, I'm just conscious of time, I could say a lot more about uh, uh, Black History Month, and I know that uh, uh, reference uh, in our pre um, start has made reference to some of the significance around that. Um, the national theme for this year is reclaim, reclaiming the narratives. Um, actually, that, that, that particular theme is consistent with where we've come from as an organization over a long period of time. Uh, we have been seeking to reclaim, to change the narrative, uh, and it's still a significant part of our reason for being. So the, the narrative this year is consistent with much of what it is that we want to do. Uh, conscious of time, I'm going to touch on a couple of other things uh, before I finish uh, my introductory comments. Something that you won't see on our program, uh, but I need to mention it is uh, uh, our gala event, which is taking place on the 16th of November. Uh, tonight, there's a last chance uh, to buy an early bird ticket. Um, if you have never been to one of our galas, if you ask anyone who has been, they'll tell you that it is going. To, it is one of the best value uh, events that you will attend. Uh, and uh, we'll put in the link if you do want to buy a ticket tonight. Uh, we'll put it in the chat so you can actually go on our website and uh, get a ticket. Uh, something else that I should also mention before I, I pass on to uh, is uh, our community needs an uh, assessment that we're working on. We are conscious that as an organization, uh, some 10 years ago, we did a bit of a needs assessment and uh, a lot of things has happened since then. And we are actually about to embark on a new uh, assessment, uh, which will be done on online. And... Uh, Please look out for that information and we'll ask you to please encourage your family and your friends to complete it so we can actually um, get to understand what are the important issues that we should be addressing um, as we go forward. I'm going to leave it there and say uh, thank you all again for coming. Together, uh, remember, our motto is together we can achieve, and I have added the term more. Together we can achieve more. So thank you very much again for coming. Um, I look forward to seeing you all engaging in some of those in, uh, activities that we're having. As I say, do become a member of the association. Having said that, I think it's time, and I'm now going to...
hand uh, over. Recording in progress. Uh, oh, I'm going to hand over to uh, uh, Councillor uh, Favor, who is one of our members, but also happens to be the uh, vice chair this year of Watford Borough Council. And we uh, we are in a unique situation in Watford where we have a board, a chair, and a vice chair who are African uh, Caribbean people. So, uh, uh, Favor. Welcome as always, uh, over to you. Thank you, thank you, Clive. Um, I want to start by welcoming everyone um, to this unique Black History event. Um, uh, as you said, Clive, we're quite in a unique position. And when um, I was sent the invite, um, because um, unfortunately um, the chairwoman is unavailable to attend and she sent her apologies. It really struck me that I'm being invited to to come to uh, Black History events, and this is something that has, you know, has never happened before um, in this capacity. So, uh, I'm, as I'm speaking, I'll be speaking on behalf of the council, but I'm also speaking as us because this is us as well. Um, if if you see what I mean. So uh, that that theme that uh, we have this year about reclaiming the narratives is really significant uh, for Watford. So I want to welcome everyone to this uh, year Black History event. And I really want to thank the organizers because looking at the uh, program uh, that has been listed, which we are going to uh, have a view of later on, I was just amazed as how the breadth and scope that went into that, that must have taken quite a lot of work. Uh, and so there's so much to enjoy. There is so much to learn, and I just want everyone to key in every day and every activity that we have. Particularly one of the uh, events that will be in person, like you said, Clive, uh, the one uh, Unity in Diversity that will be happening in Pump House Theatre on the 19th of October uh, will be also be another uh, opportunity for us to showcase you know, who we are, our culture, what we are. I just want to... Um, kind of charge us to say why we celebrate, it's really important that we reflect on the theme itself for this year. Um, and that theme uh, speaks to me as a person. And like Clive said, it speaks to us as an association in Watford. And why, why does that theme speak to me as a person? Um, part of uh, reclaiming our narrative is not just about telling our stories. Of course, we tell our stories. Uh, we're storytellers, Africans, we are. But it's also about challenging the dominant narratives that have been imposed on us and creating a new, more inclusive, empowering narratives uh, for, for our people that expresses our aspirations and our experiences. We've come a long way, particularly in Watford as a people. And so we need to begin to create a new, more inclusive and empowering narrative uh, that reflects the true experiences and aspirations of black people in Watford. So it's really important that we recognize that and we are committed to create, uh, correcting those historical inaccuracies that we have had over time. I used to say to people that the first time I entered the council chamber, I didn't see anyone that looked like me. And um, this is about just about 10 years ago, really. I didn't see no one that looked like me. But today the story has changed. When Don came along, Marilyn came along, you know, it, the story has changed completely from every the way you look at it. And in other space of life as well in Watford, you can see a lot of businesses that are set up that are running re really well. Look, look, look at how much contribution we're making in NHS, Watford General, everywhere. The story has changed dramatically from uh, when I first entered the council chamber. And I remember moving the motion. One of my first motions that I moved in the council and Ian uh, was there then, and I think Clive attended, was on how we you know, empower ourselves to celebrate Black History Month in a more empowering way. And I'm, I'm really glad that we have come to this point where we are doing it uh, as the motion really uh, stated. But Clive, I do really want us to uh, think about doing something in person, uh, one of these Black History events. Uh, maybe next year, maybe the, uh, the one when we're 50 years old as a uh, worker. Um, I know you talked about funding and all that, but we, we have to find a way to make it happen. Because there's something about connecting in person 
There's something about showcasing, you know, the vibrancy of who we are in person and bringing the wider community together to enjoy that. I, I, I would really love us to think through that. So I will just shut up in a moment and say, welcome again and enjoy yourself. Thank you. Right, thank you. I don't, am I muted? Thank you very much. All right, wonderful. Thank you very much, Councillor, uh, for your kind uh, words. Um, yes, the programme did take quite a lot of effort from myself and the other members of the planning team, but it has been enjoyable in trying to identify uh, a range of activities and topics and plays, et cetera, that we feel that the wider community would enjoy. So we do hope going forward that um, you will all take the time to support each event that has been raised. Um, we are going to uh, have some music now. Uh, there is a young man personally uh, related to myself and um, he is an absolute uh, master of music and its composure. Um, strangely enough, he started to show these signs of brilliance when he was quite young. I think he was merely five years old. And I remember uh, being at an event and someone playing this piece of music and I could have sworn it was um, composed by an adult um, with this level of geniusness um, and couldn't believe he was actually related to me. Um, he's gone on to do bigger and better things and um, has recently qualified getting the highest um, uh, qualification that you can get at GCSE level and when I spoke to him once he said his desire is to compose scores for films his um his um uh, brilliance you will experience in a minute and I'm hoping that Clive has got everything lined up so we can hear just a short extract of what he has been composing over the years. His name is Kaylin, Kaylin Johnson. Hi, I'm Kaylin, I'm 16. Hi, I'm Kaylin, I'm 16 years old and you're about to hear two pieces I composed. The first piece is a string quartet called Tension, which we have a video for. This is a performance from a concert that happened in my school. The piece explores the many meanings of the word tension in two contrasting movements. The second piece is an electronic piece. I thought I'd share something from that field because I enjoy making electronic music in my free time. Hope you enjoy. Okay, I'll share the first piece now. Bear with me a second. By two, get two free. Just £49 gets you four pairs of pants delivered to your door. Last
Sorry, uh, I think I think that was uh, uh, done. Let me just get the second bit. Oh, sorry, I think that's there was a bit more. Sorry, mm -hmm. there's a bit more to the first piece, or a you're bit. going to start the second piece. <laughs> Is that the end of the first piece? Wow. So that's the end of the second one now? Well, if that's the standard for the equivalent of O level, I can't imagine We're what. We're doing everything we can to help you save energy. <laughs> Wait, what uh, his degree, what the outcome of the work that he produces. But anyway, mm -hmm. over to you for the second part, Clive. Sorry, one second. While Clive, while you're finding that, people are just saying in the chat that it's absolutely um, superb um, and it is just beautiful. Zora, he is amazing. That's just really wonderful. Wow. He is. He is.
Thank you. That was absolutely awesome. And I'm hoping that everybody else on the call will also agree that he's got a great future ahead of him. Um, absolutely amazing. All right, so we're going to, um, I'm going to hand you over to Marilyn now, who's going to introduce the next segment of the launch. Oh, thank you, Zora. And thank you again, uh, Kaylin. That was absolutely incredible. And I love the diversity of it as well in terms of the classical. And then we've got the kind of ultra modern. That was just amazing. Mm. And in true Black History Month style, because if you've been to any of our events, be they in person or online, and of course, as Clive has said, they've been online a lot, um, there is always something jaw-dropping, amazing, very, very diverse. And this time round, we are moving to a bit of poetry. So Eva, I'm sure I saw your name um, in the, uh, let's see, let's see. There you go, Eva, how are you? Hello, everyone. Hello, Marilyn. Uh, 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 hello, um, Pauline. How are you? <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you so much. That was really nice from Karen, Zora. And uh, my next piece is um, a poem, uh, Sisters of the Sun. This has been inspired by uh, Bibi Moore Campbell, who was a passionate uh, mental health advocate. And why I say my mental health advocate, as well as it is um, Black History Month, we cannot ignore that it is also the World uh, Mental Health Month. And I'm very passionate about mental health. So um, hope you enjoy my poem. Thank you. Sisters of the Sun, we have walked long miles with tired hearts and quiet tongues. Now we speak, no longer afraid to tell of the nights we wept alone, of the voices that shattered our peace, or the hands that silenced our cries. She is a refuge in her own mind, excelled from the rest, from peace, from time. Her children are nations she builds with her hands, but in her heart, the desert expands. Her body aches, her spirit cries, but no one sees the tears in her eyes, for they are hidden behind the veil of duty, in the name of love, in the name of beauty. We rise from the ashes of broken promises, wounded but not defeated, ready to reclaim our stories, our minds, our strength. And through her bones are weary, and her heart is so, she picks up, she picks herself up to give once more. Thank you. Oh, amazing. Um, wow, no, thank you. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure if you're looking at the screen, but everybody is like, I mean, actually, if anybody, you know, I wish you could hear the applause, but that is absolutely amazing, Eva. And one of the things Thank you. it reminds me of is the um, creativity of the slaves, where I don't know if some of you may or may not know this, but in terms of what you call cornrow, my hair is dreadlocks, but you know, when you see people where it's plaited onto the scalp, they used to plait um, roots, roadmaps into the hair. So it would just look yes. like a hairstyle but those who were in the know and when you're reading your beautiful poetry I've just reminded of the creativity of the spirit even when being kind of crushed down that yes. creative piece has always been there can I just ask you in terms of what inspired that piece um it's a piece that I've been writing uh for some time because I happened to come through uh B.B. Moore Campbell and the work that she does but I as I said before uh I'm very passionate about uh mental well-being awareness in the community especially uh the black women because I've gone through some stuff as a black woman uh as a single lone woman and I know that uh the strength that goes be, be uh, with it and uh, the voices the 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 fight we have uh, to be heard especially in the community so uh 2007 i went to see my sister in america and apparently it was black history month and i've got half of my wall actually i came back with a portrait of taban um harriet taban and i remember even in the airport i was stopped like in America here and say, what's that, what's that? But that piece is in my living room and it inspires me because I've seen women struggle uh, to support others in their community. And that is why I'm passionate about my community work. 
And people underestimate the power of a clean, healthy mind. If you have a clean my mind, you have nothing troubling you or you have support around you, uh, you are very, very wealthy than uh, anyone you know that has got money. And uh, that is why I'm inspiring uh, this poem. Oh my goodness, that was absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And for those of you who are not connected with Eva, she whenever you see Eva, there was always a project, something <laughs> always bubbling under. So please, please, actually just Eva, very quickly before we go, how can people find out more about the projects? Is there a central place where everything feeds into if people wanted to kind of follow you, find out more? Oh, actually, thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mary Lane. I'm actually uh, launching a cooking experience a series two on the 7th of October, which is a Monday. I wasn't sure if I should also share it here, but you're going to see it all over the, the, the media. So this uh, cooking experience, uh, it's series two. Uh, it's in West Hearts College, uh, uh, Mondays, 11 to 3. And uh, this is for everyone in the community. If you have a passion for cooking or you don't have a passion for cooking, uh, just come as, in the, as we are cooking that pot. We are also talking about ourselves. And uh, everyone should be over 18, men and women. And uh, we are going to, uh, to help with the ingredients and uh, you can get transport back. Uh, just talk to me. So yes, uh, the, 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 the first, like the nearest, uh, uh, event and uh, it's a program actually it's not an event that's why it is in West Hearts College in the kitchen now we have been given opportunity for 12 participants to kick to cook in that big nice kitchen so West Hearts College big up for supporting our uh, black communities and uh, also uh, on 19th October um, there is an Goli event uh, which was uh, organized by Rhoda and also I've been privileged to be asked to be a host. So even that day, I'll be showcasing a bit more about what we do. And thank you so much. At the moment, we don't have an office or anything because I'm a freelance events organizer, if you like. But more of it, you can go to Kenyan Women in Hearts uh, uh, website and um, a bit of me is there. But I'm a passionate and I'm so proud to be one of the directors for Waka because this is where I started. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you so much. And, you know, people are saying some lovely comments for you in the um, in the chat as well. So, Eva, thank you. Always a pleasure. And that was just beautiful and amazing. Well, what we're going to do now is a very quick whistle stop tour, and this will be your first look, maybe. You may have seen the beautiful graphics. If you haven't seen when Clive was talking about Gemma, if it all goes to plan, <laughs> let's see now. If it all goes to plan any second now, what you will see on the screen is, um, Eva, can, uh, Zora, can you see it on the screen? Yeah, I've got it on my own laptop because I can't Perfect. see the writing on your screen. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So what you can see um, before us now is the full events calendar for Black History Month 2024. So when Clive was talking about Gemma, and the um, assets that she produces and creates, this is one of them. And so of course, here we are today on the first. Now, one of the things I'm gonna just kick off with, first of all, is just pick out a couple of things that are happening at the Watford Palace Theatre. Like West Hearts College, the Watford Palace Theatre have been really big supporters of Black History Month. We always appreciate the support. So one of the things that's happening on the 3rd of October, 2024, I better say 2024, because people sometimes click stuff on YouTube and they don't pay attention to the date. So 3rd of October, 2024, 7.30 p.m., there is a musical performance called Black is the Colour of My Voice. And I think that's perfect because we've just had the music from Kaylin and then we had the words and the poetry from Eva. So I think that's a lovely fusion. I'm just going to pick out the Watford Palace Theatre pieces because you're going to hear about the various events as we go through. On the 9th of October at 6.30 p.m., one of my favourite performances I've been for the last four years, Ballet Black. <clears throat> and it is what it sounds like. It is a whole ballet company and they are all black um, not Afro-Caribbean, they are, you know, Asian, Black, but it's beautiful, beautiful performances. So think of it like the UK version of Alvin Ailey, for example, for those of you who've been around back in the day. So 9th of October, 6.30pm, 
ballet black double bill performance and it's called heroes so that's again at the watford palace theater so i think that's that's all that we're, we've got for the palace theater let me just double check so yeah so and of course those are performances where you will purchase the tickets but one of the things we pride ourselves on at the theatre is being able to offer a fantastic night out at very reasonable prices. And also just one very quick thing to say as well, because oftentimes people don't know this. When you go into the Palace Theatre <clears throat> downstairs, we actually can use upstairs as an overflow. Pot of tea, cup of tea for a pound, a pot of tea for three pounds or a coffee. I think it's a similar price. You can go in and take your own lunch, have lunch. Just buy a drink. And apparently they said you don't have to buy a drink. But I always say to people, come on, give them a couple of quid, buy a drink. But you can go and take your own lunch. You can eat in the Palace Theatre because they, they want that to be a community space. So do also keep that in mind. So I'm now going to hand over to, I think, Alex, if you're ready for dial up, I'm going to stop sharing. So give you a moment. But Alex, if you are finished multitasking, there you are. We're going to hand over to you, Alex, our poet, our storyteller, more super talent from the community. Alex, over to you. Thank you very much. My voice is going a bit because I have been run ragged this past couple of weeks. I'm back at school full time, but still doing loads of wonderful cultural stuff. So the thing I really wanted to share with you today is the running order for Black History Month, um, Open Mic. We The dial-up is all about celebrating community and creativity in equal measure. And we do diversity specials at the Pump House Theatre. Every February, we celebrate LGBT History Month. And every October, it's a pleasure to celebrate Black History Month. Um, it's going to be a lovely afternoon event, 3 p.m. till 5 p.m. And we've got a great host of performers already lined up. Clive has said if he can join us, he's going to give a little speech. We've got Enid Saunders and Vance sharing some poetry. We're going to have the dial-up band. So provided my voice is back on form, I'll be sharing some of my favourite songs from the Great American Songbook, supported by the amazing John Medcalf on piano on Bon Sui on saxophone. We've got the Soul Sisters, Bandler and Tracy, who are going to come and share some of their favourite Motown songs. Um, Brian Scott and Charlotte H Harker with more poetry. The Susan Watt Manor Gospel Choir. They meet every week at the um, Big Asda by the Dome. Um, roundabout and they'll be coming along and sharing some choral music with us another poet Leslie Kerr Simon Lorden who does um, guitar and voice uh, Watford writers will be there representing their creative writing uh, Melville Lovett Simone Millwood and Chris McDermott are their ambassadors for poetry and prose and then wrapping up the event, we'll have David Nanton with his unique brand of comedy. It's going to be a brilliant afternoon. We've got a little bit of contingency space. So if anybody listening thinks, do you know what? I'd love to go. We love audience. Come along and watch. But I'd love to go and maybe do a little turn. Is there five minutes left? Come along. We will find those five minutes for you. You can have your moment on stage. We would love to welcome you. So it's three till 5 p.m. this Sunday, the 6th of October at the Pump House Theatre. I will put my blog details in the chat. So if you want to double check any of that information, you can do so easily. And I'll also put in the chat a link to a new sizzle reel I've created. Um, thank you to everyone who came to support Love in Slough, which was my new one man musical that got perf performed at the Watford Fringe in July. We had it filmed. And the filmographer has edited a fantastic little sizzle reel together. I will share that for you in the chat. Do give it a watch if you've got a moment. Um, and finally, you'll know I run the What's on Watford podcast, which is all about creating a cultural window to the wonderful artistic events going on in our town. I will put a link to that on the chat as well. If you are running a cultural event at any time in the year, which you would like to have promoted, represented, discussed on the podcast, which is dedicated to our town's artistic and cultural life, then please do get in touch. The last episode um, was really well received and um, the next is going to put well, it's, it's a unique historic meeting between three different amateur dramatic groups in Watford, the Belmont Players, Casio Productions, 
and the Pump House Theatre Company. We got them all round a table talking about the successes and challenges facing Watford Amateur Dramatics at the moment. A fascinating conversation. Um, every month, I take what's on Watford and share what's going on in our town on The Vibe, which is our local community radio station. So again, that's um, coming up this coming Saturday. If you've got anything you'd like me to mention, I'll be talking about Black History Month for sure, but a little snippets or insights of information. I'm gleaning a lot from listening to the wonderful bits of information and creativity everyone is sharing tonight. Let me know in the chat and I'll do my best to include it on Rachel Wilkes. Saturday morning vibe show. Whew, that's a lot. <laughs> oh, Alex, Everyone enjoy the rest of the night. And before you go, just because people might be watching the video, they're not going to see the chat. Can you just very quickly say your blog, just if people want to look that up? Yes. So it is the dialup.blogspot.com. Wonderful. Thank you. An old school remedy for the old throat used to be some warm water, some salt, a good old gargle. <laughs> I have a sweet tooth. It's always honey and lemon for me. I was going to say the next thing is the honey and lemon. That's my favourite. Yeah. <laughs> Alex Williams, thank you so much. And if you've never um, heard and seen Alex perform, I highly recommend it. He is absolutely amazing. And you can also sometimes catch him in Casebury Park at various times of the year. Now I'm going to had, hand over to Clive Saunders, who is going to talk a bit about uh, a very special guest that we have been pursuing for some time. So Clive, over to you to talk about that. And I think you're also going to maybe... Uh, mentioned the gala dinner which is in November so just outside of Black History Month. Over to you Clive and you are muted at the moment. So the event I want to pick up on in the first instance uh, uh, is the event that's happening next week uh, which is on the 7th which is uh, the diabetes session uh, which is entitled Keep Your Eyes on the Prize High Health and Wellbeing, Goals in Diabetes and Pre-Diabetes. Um, what I want to uh, say is that uh, um, there are some conditions that are particularly significant in our community, and this is one of them. Um, I'm personally um, aware of uh, someone who, first of all, had one leg amputated, then another one, uh, before, unfortunately, dying even before reaching the age of 60. And it was all down to uh, being diabetic and not controlling their di diabetes and probably, where possible, not, avo uh, not avoiding it in the first instance. Um, I've got a personal interest in this in that I've, uh, uh, my, my doctor tells me that I'm pre-diabetic and knowing what I know, I want to try and do what I can to try and... Um, avoid some of the the possible outcomes that might occur from this. So what's pretty clear, it's a condition that impacts you in various ways. I mean, what we've said said in the invite, that there's a focus on uh, high, high health, but actually it impacts on people uh, in a, a range of uh, ways. So on next week, what we're going to have is a couple of expert from our community and they are going to be uh, informing us, educating us on uh, various aspects of this, particularly um, in the context of eye health. So these two people, we've got uh, uh, Dr. Jones uh, St. John, um, who is a, a doctor with a special interest in diabetes. She currently, currently works as part of an, an award-winning uh, um, service um, down in Brent. She's also um, with a, an international hat, uh, a voluntary clinical advisor to Diabetes Africa, because of course it's a it's a big issue there too. Um, um, equally, um, she's somebody who actually lives quite local, uh, and she's uh, going to be. Uh, sharing some of uh, those insights uh, with us uh, on, on next week, Tuesday. Our second speaker uh, is Dr. Evelyn Menser, who is a uh, consultant, consultant ophthalmic surgeon. She's also uh, the clinical lead and the workforce race equality standard expert at London 
Northwest University Health with LK Trust. Um, and she's somebody who is a very experienced as a consultant with some 16 years of experience in that particular field. Um, what I can say about our speakers, they're both uh, committed to race equality. Um, if we think about reclaiming the narrative, there are people who are very much uh, engaged uh, in that. Um, this particular condition is something that can impact on each and every one of us. And what I would say is that uh, this is one of those sessions that uh, um, from an information perspective, from a well-being perspective, I think we must all be ready to come and join in um, that session on Tuesday and invite your family and friends because actually, what is say, forearmed for is a... Uh, uh, forewarned or whatever the saying say. Forewarned is forearmed is yeah. the expression. Forearmed. Uh, so this is one of those things that's going to help us on that road to try and making sure that we make the best decisions we can uh, as well as we can. Uh, so please don't miss it. Uh, please share it with, with others uh, in your uh, contact and encourage them to make sure they come along. Too often people only seem to come to these things when they think that, oh, well, I've now got a particular problem. Well, this is an area where any of us can have a problem. So um, don't miss it. That's it. On that one, I think I've got to come back later on to talk about Dawn Edge, don't I? It's not immediate. It's, or is it straight away? I would say no. speak about, you can speak about Dawn Edge now because I had that on this segment of the schedule and we've got about a minute left before we go to have a quick break. Oh, well, very, <laughs> very, very quickly then. Um, um, the Dawn, uh, Professor Dawn Edge is somebody that uh, um, some on this call might know is uh, somebody that some of us have met before. It's, uh, she's somebody that we've been trying to engage with for a while. She's agreed to, to, to come and engage with us on the topic of mental health strategies in difficult times. And when you think about it, there can't be many of us now nowadays who isn't conscious of the mental health issues that there is around uh, for, uh, and particularly for our community where it is much more acute than it is uh, for other communities, both in terms of uh, the impact of the condition and even access to services. Uh, so for uh, those kinds of reasons, it will be a session that you really do need to be at. Um, and is somebody who's at the leading edge of this work. So Professor Dawn Edge is the Mental Health and Inclusivity Professor at Manchester, uh, University of Manchester. Um, she's uh, also another person who is uh, um, leading in this uh, equality and diversity uh, area with, um, within that, which specializes in race, religion, and belief. Um, she'll, she's coming to us with years of experience um, um, she's a research uh, professor, so she's been researching these issues for more than a decade. And uh, um, you don't want to uh, miss that because this is, again, one of those situations which um, can um, impact on every one of us. And um, I would say to people here, don't think that because you don't have any mental health issues um, or you haven't recognized any, that it isn't relevant to you. Um, it, it might be relevant to people that you know, but tomorrow may be very different for any one of us. And that's the situation. So put that in your diary uh, for um, um, the, a couple of weeks time when that will be again, not to be missed uh, if, you, if you are at all available. I'll leave it there because we have to have a break. Yeah, but before we go, um, could I just interject and ask, um, is it Councillor Favour who would like to talk about the gala on the 12th of October? Can she just say a few words about that? Um, I think. Um, oh, OK, so. That, or would you like to say a few words I mean, about it? The, the uh, 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 Dawn, um, Councillor Dawn, uh, uh, who is now the chair of the, the council for this year, uh, is organising a Black History Month. Uh, I think it's a dance rather than, a, uh, what do you call it, girl? Um, on the 12th of October at the Hilton Hotel. Uh, I know they're very keen 
to encourage those of you who are available to go along. It is in aid of uh, uh, the charities that she's chosen to support uh, uh, over the coming years. So if you're available, then do look that up. Do you know what the, the cost of attending is, Clive? Uh, it is £50 pounds at the moment. 50 at the moment. It might go up then, might it? I think it's gone up. I think it was four to five pounds. It's not 50 pounds. Oh, right. Okay. Right then. So we are almost bang on in terms of schedules. So can we um, uh, have a five-minute break? Don't disappear. It literally is a comfort break to use the bathroom, grab a drink, cup of coffee, glass of wine, whatever is your, your tipple. And we'll see you back here in five minutes, which will take us up to quarter to, just under quarter to eight. All right, so we'll see you back here. Thank you. I'm asked here. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, why, what happened?
How are we doing for time? Everyone back from their comfort break? Yeah, that's five minutes and two seconds and 19 <laughs> or something. <laughs> so we're per perfect timing. <laughs> that is super, super exacting. It's quite difficult to see everything on your phone. My my laptop is really aging. I've had it for about 20 years. <clears throat> And it's struggling to upload instantly. It takes about 10 minutes. Oh, dear. Well, I'm using my phone, so um, I'm struggling to uh, see everyone on the screen. But, uh, but it looks like we're all good. So when you're, ha when you're ready, we can rock and roll. All right. Where is Mr. Saunders? Can't see his face. I am here. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Well, it looks like um, we are going to give our guests who have joined us this evening the opportunity to reveal themselves, show themselves, <laughs> and to ask any questions that they would like about the forthcoming uh, schedule of activities um, that we put on for Black History Month. So if anybody wants to, uh, excuse me, got any burning questions that they would like, please raise your hand. Marilyn, you'll be able to see the full screen. I, I can only see bits of it on my phone. I but is there anyone? Any hands raised at the moment. Any I'm just hand a look. Can't see raised. any questions at the moment. So I think we might be all right, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Can oh. I just say one thing really quickly? I forgot to mention. <laughs> of course you may. <laughs> Sorry. Firstly, I keep getting kicked out. I think there's something wrong with my computer. Thank you to whoever it is who's letting me back in again. It must be very irritating. <laughs> I apologise for that. Secondly, I forgot to mention the Black History Month dial-up is free. What a silly thing to forget to mention. It's entirely free. We accept donations to anyone who feels able to give a fiver. It helps us continue with the work we're doing, but there's no requirement to come along and enjoy the entertainment for absolutely nothing. I was just planning to approach my bank for a loan, Alex. <laughs> you can remortgage. <laughs> Are you accepting any donations, Alex, towards any causes that you're working on? Yeah, so the donations we accept are being split between the dial-up, which is all about celebrating community and creativity, and the mm -hmm. Pump House Theatre itself, which is currently running a Raise the Roof campaign. They have to raise three quarters of a million pounds to put a new roof over the theatre. So it's a really good cause. Right, brilliant. So if anybody wants to go along, if anyone's got deep pockets or assets that they would like to gift away to Alex's organisation, Feel free. So, any questions or any comments coming through in the chat, Marilyn? No, I think we're good. And one thing, it's a bit cheeky, but I would, when Alex was saying they've got five minutes, I'm like, oh, if Eva's not already not already speaking, I think her poem would be fabulous for your one of your dial-up events. But that's just me. But no, I can't see any questions at the moment, so I think we're all good. Okay. So, we have a young gentleman called Samson, or Sammy, as he likes to be affectionately called, are you there? Reveal yourself. Is he on the on the call? He, he was here earlier on. Um, I would think he's still. Is he available? Uh, hello, hello. Oh, wonderful! Right, excellent. Are you still sitting in your car, Sam? Yeah, I am. I didn't want to go home and have this meeting. I just prefer to be on my own. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right, so you you got good acoustics then in your car because it'll all you're enclosed. So. Uh, so I'm not going to be rapping today. I know on the um itinerary it says that I'm rapping, but I had uh, previously spoken to Clive, and I'm more interested in my filmmaking. So I'd sent Clive a link to my YouTube video. Oh, I see. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry, um, Samson, did you want me to share that? Yeah, yeah, if you could. Uh, well, do you, do you want to uh, say something? Because uh, let me just go and locate that. Hang on a second. For sure, for sure. Um, So I'm a 24-year-old aspiring filmmaker. I mean, you could already call me a filmmaker, but I wouldn't I wouldn't take that name on yet because I don't feel I've achieved um anywhere near what I'm planning to achieve. Um, 
so if any of you guys have any narratives that you want to tell, uh, like in a visual format, I'm the person to talk to. I'm I'm also in the midst of starting my own production company. Um, it's just a case of finding people that can work, but that's not even a, really a problem. I mean, a lot of my friends support me, so when I need people to help me, people are at my beck and call very, very fortunately. And likewise as well, I'm at theirs as well when they need my help. Um, the video that Clive's about to pull up is a video that it basically, I, I'm in the midst of filming my first short movie called 23. Right. Oh, you've gone silent, Sam. Could you just repeat that last bit? Because you saw, we lost a little bit of the sound. Okay, sorry, sorry. So I'm in the midst of, uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm in the midst of filming my first ever short movie. It's called 23. Um, oh. I started filming, we started filming in, I think, 2022. Um, and at that time, I was like, I'd been doing YouTube for a long time. So I thought to myself, right, I'm, I'm going to be able to do this in a breeze. Like, this is a short movie. Obviously, it's a big step up from doing 10 minute YouTube videos, but I'll be able to dust it off. And uh, I planned everything out. I'd written the script and everything. And uh, it it's way it's much more of a process than I had first imagined when I went into it. So, although I am going to finish twenty three, um, I can't wait to get onto the next project just to use all the knowledge that I've built up from this project, just in terms of turning over the film in a much quicker time. So the video that that Clive is about to pull up is a video that I made to let the people know that are waiting for 23 to come out how the day goes like in me shooting a movie in me filming a day of 23 so enjoy thank you thank you very much for that intro This was a day I was excited for. And that's because this is my first nighttime shoot. I organized the scene we're filming a week in advance and put a team together. The team. Yours truly, directing and filming. Robert on the lights, cause it is a night scene after all. Tom on the sound, watch what you say, he'll hear you from a mile away. Nikki acting, top actress. Though, unfortunately, Rob was double booked and had to drop out, which meant no lighting. But sometimes this stuff happens. We set plans and expect everything to go to plan. And then when they don't go to plan, we tend to get downhearted. Now I know it sounds cliche, but the best thing to do is to keep calm and carry on. Before I film a scene, there are a few things I factor in. Natural lighting, how the scene will be filmed, and the general aesthetic of the area. But for this shoot, I only factored in two of the three components, missing out how the scene should be filmed. So, I had to improvise. Now, improvisation isn't something I'm afraid of, but it's not something I favour. I prefer to improvise over a plan I've already set. For example, if I plan a shoot of me cutting the grass and in the storyboard, I plan I'm going to do a low shot to the right of my right foot. But in real life, it looks better to the left of my left foot. You know what I'm going to do? Improvise. But with this particular scene, I had to come out of the shot on set. So I was feeling unprepared and anxious. But overall, the day went well. And I learned a whole lot mainly to plug in my camera so that it can charge and not plug in a plug head that looks similar to the plug head of my camera. 
<laughs> but that's a story for another day. So, good night. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. It wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for you, Lord Jesus. You are so powerful and so amazing, Lord God. Thank you for all the things that I have, Lord Jesus, and help me to remember through comparison and through anything of that nature, Lord God, that I am me and others are others, Lord God. You have me where you want me, Lord Jesus. And um, just help me to remember, Lord God, that your path for me is not improvised, Lord God. Your path for me is certain, Lord God, and it is for the better lord god you've started a work and you will finish the work lord jesus um no matter how long it takes so i will remain patient in your name lord god in jesus name i pray amen oh one last thing please can you turn off the light <laughs> thank you good night love you lord 23 out soon. Make sure you watch it. <laughs> Good night. Love you. So yeah, that's my video. Just letting everybody know that 23 mainly is still on the way, but also giving them some insight into what it takes to do it. Mm, awesome. Absolutely um, awesome. Much I love that. I love the last bit. I love okay. the prayer. <laughs> yeah, that was oh, natural. And, and one last thing, <laughs> as we all do oh, oh, before oh, we turn yeah. off. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Because you know, I don't know if you remember when you used to have sleepovers or have sleepovers or whatnot. But like, there's somebody that's just say like he continues talking throughout the night, like just saying one last trying to go to bed. So I just thought, let me just incorporate that into the film. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it was it was humor. It added the humor to the yeah. to the method behind filming. So yeah, it was great. Really, really loved it. And good Thanks. luck. When are you planning to launch Thanks. twenty when are you planning to air twenty three? So like I'm I'm hoping December, but I refuse to tell anybody a date because it's I've got so much stuff going on. Like although twenty three so the reason why it's taking so long is because everybody's working. Everybody has, um, like, is is working uh, however many hours a week. So this is the thing when it when you're not when you're not in a position to pay actors or actresses, you have to be able to work around each other's schedule. So yeah, it's just a case of just organizing my time of course first of all because i'm the person behind the camera and organizing everything but also their time because they're the people in front of the camera but my on my time i've got a lot of stuff on my hands and them on the other side have so much stuff as well on their hands so it's just a case of really right now just focusing on 23 and putting my other stuff to the side just for a second but at the same time i don't want to put anything to the side i actually i just want to Hold on, sorry. I just want to, um, I want to balance both. I want to do both. I can't stop what I'm doing because I know I can do both. Um, so it's just a case of that, really. So December, but don't hold me to December. Right. Okay. Well, that's good. At least that's in our minds. We can work towards that. So yeah, are you second. going to um, release any contact details or how you know you, you're you going to release it i'm i'm not expecting it to sort of be a um <clears throat> uh what do you call it um i've got a blockbuster so we're not going to see it but how how can we just keep tabs on you just to see what you're up to for sure um so i'm about to send in uh, uh my instagram and then i'm going to send in a picture as well for those of you that don't really use Instagram where you can see content that I'm still creating, like the things that I'm still doing up until this time. Yeah. Um, like when I say that I've got things going on on my side, this is, this is like one avenue of stuff that I'm doing. Um, so that, that is it's another avenue of stuff that I'm doing. But so I've just sent in a link to my Instagram to the chat for everybody. Right. And okay. then I've sent in, a, I'm just about to send in a picture 
Um, and that picture, I've circled, I've put a red ring around one of the tabs on Instagram. If you click that tab, you'll see just a bunch of videos that I've made in the meantime. Right. And the, re the reason why I'm continuing to make videos and stuff is because, honestly, if you want a movie to, to work, like, if you want a movie to take off, the way that a movie takes off a lot of times is by having, if I had Leonardo DiCaprio or Denzel uh, Washington acting in one of my videos, everybody, all his fans would look. It's the same way if, I don't know, Spike Lee was directing a movie. People would be like, okay, that's Spike Lee. So what I'm trying to do, you're right. It might not be a blockbuster, but I'm aiming for it to be a blockbuster. So I'm trying to build up my reputability so that people can see what I'm doing and like love what I'm doing and want to keep tabs on me so that when I do drop, not only will I get recognition, but also everybody that's a part of it will get recognition. When when we very, very first started filming, um, I wanted to have every, all the actors and crew come round to my house so that we could all sit down and talk. But unfortunately, I can't actually remember what happened. I think like two people dropped out, but I wanted everybody to be there. So it ended up, it ended up being a thing where it was Zoom. And that's one of the things we're talking about that, or I was explaining to everybody that I'm trying, although like the likelihood of it being huge like huge 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 is is small but i'm going to do the most that i can in order to make sure that it is the biggest that it can possibly be so fantastic, fantastic. yeah yeah <clears throat> well everything every every level of greatness always starts with the first step and you certainly look as if you've made more than one step Thank so you. you know i wish you all the very best and we'll be keeping tabs on you awesome. just making sure you fulfill those dreams of yours thank you so very thank much. you very much i'm going to hand over to marilyn now marilyn's going to talk about the next part of the program for black history oh thank you so much zora and before we kind of move off from sammy i just want to read some of the comments so we have those in the recording yeah. Um, oh, that was me. I said, brilliant. Congratulations. But we had Eva, who's saying, I'm inspired by you, Sammy. And um, well done. Uh, we have Marcia saying, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Oh, hello, One Vision. So One Vision says, impactful messaging through such a simple and well executed narrative. And um, they lots of applause. Amazing, Samson. Um, Jenny says, really great. Look forward to the launch. And I'm sure I saw one from Ian as well. So we've got Catherine. This is so innovative. Innovative. Keep it up. And a counsellor Ian Stotesbury says, good luck for December. Um, and Eva says, Sammy is original and I hope he can get someone um, to help him further. He can do that through people in this Zoom. And it's um, Samson Alexander. And it looks like two, double R if you're going to be looking at Instagram. So that was absolutely amazing so much talent in the community what can I say so we're going back now to a very quick overview of what else is coming up on the next half of the program so um councillor favor I believe you're still here I can see your your square so just to give you a little bit of a heads up if you asked it yes I can see you've unmuted so I'm um, here wonderful yeah. that is amazing and also just you know happy um, Nigerian Independence Day as well because thank you <laughs> want to say that officially but can you tell us a bit more about now there's an event unity through diversity and also anything else that you've got coming up can i hand over to you for that okay so the unity and diversity program uh, is being organized in the community um and uh, godly cic is uh, leading on it i think um eva referred to it as well so my uh the the plan is to showcase different um communities and countries uh, within the black community in, in, in the Pump House Theater uh, to showcase the different culture in whichever way, shape or form, the different countries and community would like to showcase their culture uh, and their community to the outside uh, wider community of Watford. That, that's the plan uh, on the day. Um, the other bit is, um, yes, today is uh, Nigeria Independence Day. Um, we are um, uh, marking it in our forum in Nigerians in Watford, um, reflecting on the journey that we've made as a people um, back home uh, and also as a people here in Watford. Um, we are using the same theme that uh, the Black History Month team about reclaiming the narrative. So we are uh, thinking through how 
we reposition ourselves and challenge some of the stereotypes um, that you know uh, those that have been created around um, us as black people. So that's basically what what is going on uh, between the Nigerians and then the unity and diversity. Wonderful. Thank you very much for that. That is absolutely amazing. And Clive has also said happy Nigerian Independence Day officially from Waka. <laughs> <laughs> and from Clive. <laughs> and from Clive, of course. And he has also put the link in where you can become a member of Waka. Clive, is it still free to become a member? Yes. Wonderful. So no excuses. Get yourself signed up. All nationalities are welcome and you can be anywhere in the world because, of course, a lot of this happens by Zoom. So actually, I think, Clive, you because I am going to we've got Zori. Zori, you're going to talk in a few moments about stroke. But Clive, do you want to come in and pick up some of the other things that we've got going on here? So we've got uh, the reality of homelessness. I'm not sure if Daisy, I don't know if DP is Daisy, but you can tell me, Clive. And we're also going to have a bit more about the Black History Month quiz, which is yourself and Joe Innes. And I think Joe is now in the house. So, Clive, I'm going to hand over to you to anything else you want to pick up on. And then we'll come back to Zora to talk about the stroke. Um, actually, the reality of homelessness, it may well be that Amadou knows a bit more about it uh, than me, because that's part of uh, an initiative for uh, from um our tribe uh, youth project. Uh, um, so I will talk about something else. And if uh, Amadou wants to add anything in relation to that, um, what we do know, and I've seen it in reality, homelessness is a reality for us, but you may have some more because Daisy isn't with us uh, today to, to to say a bit more. Uh, but I can talk, um, I'll, let, I'll leave Joe, if he's in the house, to, to mention about the quiz. I will talk about the, the Walk and Talk, which is on the 2nd of November. Uh, Samantha Hutchinson, one of our uh, directors, who is leader, leading actually on that, um, she's uh, um, devised a, a route around Casper Park that will take, um, we think, roughly an hour and a half to two hours, depending on how you walk. So it's going to be at one o'clock. Um, the what all I would say is that the walk in question is one where uh, you'd probably find that uh, there's a, a few uh, areas, probably a couple of hundred uh, meters in the on the whole where it's it goes over some grass um, or not tarmac areas. Uh, so um, be mindful of that if, for example, you're uh, being along uh, pushed here. But we were talking about. Uh, uh, diabetes and all of that uh, early on and getting out into the fresh air is part of how you might actually begin to combat that so do try and come along i think we put um uh, an invitation out there and some people have, have said yes but um look it's a, a, an opportunity to go and socialize if people bring along a, a packed lunch we could uh um, spend some time afterwards if it's not too cold and it's not raining. But whatever the event, uh, whatever the situation, please uh, uh, come and join us. It's it's good. When we've had these events, they've always been um, most enjoyable. So come along uh, for that. But uh, Amadou, did you um, know anything about the reality of homelessness session that you can share? Because uh, or any of the colleagues are more involved on a day to day basis than Thrive. Um, I, I can I can sort of step in in, in Daisy's absence um, and and really is trying to bring to light what is a national problem um, because um, I don't know whether people are aware but um, homelessness in the UK there are over hundred thousand um, homeless people in the UK and of that they reckon about four thousand of those sleep rough every night um, and what we're trying to do as Tribe really is try to recognise that um, within the community. There is that as well. There's need for homeless for for, for permanent accommodation. Um, so what we're doing is, I think in what for there are three homeless, um, if you like, setups in the area. I'm hoping that going forward, we'll be able to partner with those and help community members get some assistance. And it's not just having not just having a roof over your head, but there are families who live in temporary accommodation, and that can really cost them a lot from education for the children to. Being able to hold a proper job, if you don't have a, a roof over your head, 
it cost you a lot. So this is something that we think um, as, as Thrive and as worker, we should be able to really um, look into to help community members um, help them in a way that will help them get permanent home to really be functioning members of the community. Um, so going forward, you'll hear more what the plans are, how we need to uh, link with other organizations in the community to really um, plug that gap within the society itself or community at large. Thank you, Amadou. And just to say, if Joe's in the house, Joe, do you want to uh, comment on uh, our quiz? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much uh, for joining tonight. And um, hopefully, yeah, everyone will be able to join us at the quiz. So it's going to be on the right at the end of the month. So it's the 31st of October. Um, it's going to be over Zoom. So really easy for everyone and anyone to join. Um, it starts at 6.30. We will try and keep it to less than two hours. So, um, uh, so if you join us at the beginning, then you should better join us all the way through and get the answers towards the end. Um, yeah, it should be good. It's going to be family friendly. So there, we're going to avoid any profanities or anything rude. It should be nice and uh, you know fun for all the family. Good. Uh, lots of black history relevant to us, obviously, in Watford, um, to uh, black people in the UK and around the world. Um, it should be educational and entertaining or edutainment, as I like to say. So, yeah, like, please do join us. Um, and I'll be, yeah, quick. Clive's got all the knowledge and I've got the uh, all the, the silly kind of the the fun games in between. <laughs> Clive's the brains and I'm the, I don't know if I'd say the brawn, what would you say? <laughs> <laughs> They're not the brains. <laughs> yeah, Joe, you've got the know-how, he's got the brains, yeah? yeah. There you go, there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it sounds brilliant. Um, and piggybacking on um, all of that, um, I... Um, have arranged for uh, someone from the Stroke Association to to come along and speak to the group um, about another important issue around stroke. Now, we've talked about dementia and we've talked about a number of other things and the importance of keeping well. But one of the other kind of huge um, uh, health issues in our community is the uh, prevalence of hypertension and that this spiraling out of control can often lead to strokes. Now, strokes can happen at any time. Children have them, have been known to have them. But in our community, they tend to happen often sort of around the middle age. And if dependent on the kind of stroke that you have, it can be extremely debilitating. And if you happen to live for another 10, 20 years after the episode, it means that, you know, you can have a life that is very different from the one that you experienced before the stroke. So um, a lady called Tracy Hughes will come along and she will talk about its prevalence, what we can do as a people to change our lifestyle or adapt our lifestyles to ensure that we come out of the high risk category and live a life that is um, less um, high risk. And I hope she will make you feel empowered that there are things that you can do where you can stop and look at your, your lifestyle and to engineer and make the changes to ensure that, you know, between now and the big day when we get called by the big man, that we have um, a healthy and disease-free lifestyle. So that's happening on the 22nd, uh, between 6.30 to 8.30. Um, so we've talked about the walk and talk. Uh, I think it's my Marcia. Marcia, are you there? I don't think so. I was just checking the list. I don't see. And just actually a quick one. While we're on the walk and talk, there was a question in terms of what's the meeting point for that at, at Casterbury oh, Park? Uh, yes, it's at, in the Casterbury Park car park. And just to say in relation to that, um, there's a limit of two hours, I think, parking in the car park. But on on that Saturday, on the surrounding streets, uh, there is no restrictions on parking. So you don't necessarily, uh, 
in order to avoid uh, going over the, the, the two hour period, you might, if you can, want to park um, on the, the streets nearby and they're not far. Okay. Um, you have to remind me what date the dementia event is taking place. Clive, can you pick up on that? Uh, A bit more of the detail. Uh, yes, um, the dementia event is taking place as part of the uh, um, the uh, uh, 50 plus uh, set of activities. Uh, we were approached by the dementia uh, charity uh, who, who like every other of these, uh, um, you might say, national bodies, recognize that there is uh, an underrepresentation uh, of uh, people from our community that they're engaging with um, and equally accessing services. So they wanted to, to work with us. And of course, dementia is something that impacts more on our older members of the community than others. But as uh, uh, someone was saying to me not long ago, of course, it can start qu at quite an early age. This is something that is... Uh, um, will be of interest to everybody anyway, because actually it might be your parents or your grandparents uh, who is uh, being impacted by this. And often there's a lot of uh, um, misunderstanding. Um, there is um, a lot of um, uh, stigma around um, this, like other mental health issues. Uh, so we're going to, on that occasion, and um, um, I'm afraid, it's on the program, and I, I haven't got the date in front of me, but uh, on that program that... Uh, the 30th of October. A, huh? The 30th of October, if you're talking about the dementia. Yeah, it is 30th of October. Uh, so, and that will be at the, as the yeah. room is in the afternoon. So, um, encourage those you know to come along and join in, uh, because it's an important issue again. Okay, that's fantastic. Right, let's just check. We're running slightly, well, actually, if we keep it to time, unless anyone's got any questions or comments, um, I'm not sure if Simone's in the house. Is she, is she no, with no, us? No, no, it's, uh, she sent a, a recording. So by way of context, um, and it may be if we can put anything in the chat if they wish to. Uh, um, by way of context, uh, uh, for our gala, um, one of our star uh, performers will be Simone Robinson, and uh, she shared uh, a couple of uh, tracks um, um, for us. I'm not going to record this because actually they are on YouTube and sometimes when we've... Uh, uh, so I'm going to pa pause the recording before I play this because uh, um, I'm not sure um, YouTube will say that uh, it's, it runs counter to their... Uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, their regulations or whatever. Copyright, so, uh, copyright maybe. Huh? Copyright. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and could so. could I say just before you pause and wrap things up before you come back to wrap up the meeting, that how extraordinary Simone is as a singer. She I got married earlier on this year and Simone, because I'd met her at another event and was blown away by her talent, I asked her if she would kindly sing at my wedding, which she did. And she just blew away both myself and my husband to be as he was then and everybody who attended our wedding. She stayed the whole day. And in fact, I was quite organised up until... I went into the um, area where the ceremony was going to take place and she was practicing. She was warming up her voice in preparation for the big event. And I have to say, when I saw her and I listened to her, she blew me away and I burst into tears. And I thought, oh gosh, I hope I don't sort of sob my way through the whole ceremony. But if you come along to our gala and if you get the chance to hear her in person, you won't be disappointed because she's an absolute delight. She's absolutely fabulous. So I'll leave it to you, Clive, to take her away. Special, but I just want 
So if you weren't here live, you missed something really special with regards to um, Simone Robinson. So I just want to go through the comments very quickly so we get these on the recording. So if Simone is, is watching this. Wonderful voice. Um, PD says, MA says, wow. Uh, Joe Innes says, what a beautiful voice. Amazing. Jenny says, how beautiful and amazing talent. Um, um, Abda from One Vision says, such an incredible voice. Our Zoom user um, says, we'll come again. Khadija, hey Khadija. Khadija says, incredible si singing and talent. Beverly Grant says, wow, what a voice. Marcia says, absolutely incredible. Eva says, beautiful voice, passion showing through. We need to nurture young talent. Ian Stokesbury says, wonderful and good plug for the gala, Clive. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so yeah, it's absolutely, Catherine says, absolutely outstanding, wonderful voice. So absolutely incredible to you, Clive, because are you going to introduce Amadou for our closing remarks? Given that you opened the show, are you going to top and tail it? I would, I, okay, yeah, well, I could just say that uh, um, I'm going to hand over to uh, our vice chair, uh, Amadou, who will uh, close the show. Amadou. Thank you. Thank you, Clive, and, and thanks, everyone. Well, I think this is just a, a beginning of what will be a fairly impressive and I hope very informative month for everybody that's been able to join us today. I want to thank you for giving up your time to really support us in the start of what will be a, a, a good month for the community at large. So for 2024, the program launch, from what I can say, has gone well. You can see the talent that we've got to display and the contributions that are made. So for this month, I go back to uh, Councillor Favor's theme, really, which is we're trying, we're working on, actually, it's not trying, we're, we're working on reclaiming the narrative. So I think that's the that's the theme going forward. So if you go through the experiences, all the things we're sharing for this month, just remember, it's just really taking uh, control of that narrative that has never been the opportunity in the past. And for those that have made today a success, I'd just like to thank our speakers, contributors, and presenters. Favor, I think on behalf of WBC, you've really inspired us to, to really see how we can go about taking control of the narrative by reclaiming that. Um, and Kaylin as well, um, superb I've got here, and beautiful classical music. I think uh, that's a talent in the making that we all look forward to really seeing and supporting in the future. Um, and Eva, wow, that poem was amazing. I mean, it really, really lifted our spirits. And I think it, to me, don't normally get to be to be, to be be sort of a, part of a, an inspiration like that today. So thank you. And, and please give us more poems that you have, I think, over the course of the month. We appreciate that. Um, Alex as well. I mean, not very often accountants get involved with artists, but I think, I mean, what you have to tell us about the arts program in Watford, it's worth my appetite. And I hope it does the same for the members as well. So Please, more of that, and we'll really be part of that as well going forward. Um, Samson, we were thinking you'd be really entertaining us through your music as in the past, but I think it just goes to show how versatile you've become over the years. So that that video is inspiring. And I, I think what I liked about it is is the theme about improvisation, because that was just such a strong message to send across for somebody starting in a new realm as well. So keep going, keep improvising. That's how you get to be on top. So well done on that. Um, Simone, well, what can I say? She wasn't in, present in person, but I can't wait to see her in the flesh when we have our gala night, because that was really, really amazing closing song. I think everybody will agree with me on that. And finally, I'd like to thank members who are part of the working group, because as Clive said, this is not done. Um, 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 in, in people's sort of I mean, paid time. This is done outside people paid time. So we appreciate that. And our host, Marilyn and Zora, you really kept us going in the way you've always done. So thank you. And for all those who uh, will be presenting on the program over the next four to five weeks, we really, really thank you all for being part of the program. And we look forward to seeing your contributions. And finally, this is not a sales speech, but as Clive always does, Please remember to, to snap those tickets that are going hot. Don't let them go without you getting your, your, your tickets, please. So, so that's one way you can support the organization. And also your membership. This is how we grow. So an opportunity 
for you to sign up as members again. And also for the activities taking place, I think we've got 12. Please, please support us as you've done. And let's make this month a month that will be rewarding for everybody else. And thank you for joining us tonight. And have a good month. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everyone. And that was spot on. It's, it's 8.29 and we said we finished at 8.30. So I think that is amazing. Thank you all. Clive, as always, man behind the scenes, pulling it all together. Thank you, Zora. A pleasure to work with you today, as always. Absolute Thank pleasure you. too, Marilyn. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who came along and, and all of our performers, as they said. Bye-bye, all. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you in the flesh at each, each event. Yeah. Or on Zoom. All right. Good night, folks. Bye, everyone. Bye.